All right. I think we're live, but I will confirm. Okay, cool. So today we're going to look into data-driven design. What is data-driven design? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Wait, wait. <laughs> um, data-driven design is kind of like, um, I think we're still trying to understand it ourselves, but like what I understand, which is the interesting part, is that um, you kind of take some piece of data and you can display it in many different ways, um, mm -hmm. depending on the use case or the need. Um, and especially if you can kind of build a tool that allows users to kind of manipulate their own data uh, uh, for whatever their need is, um, it seems like it gets really, really powerful there. So it's kind of like customized views for whatever the problem or thing you're trying to understand or learn or the information you're trying to get. Mm. Um, and I think the best place to probably begin is maybe with that Notion doc, actually. All right. That um, uh, you can go ahead and get to it. I'll leave it to you. So we would started, like, um, I guess, curating some examples of data-driven design just to get an idea of what's possible. Is it this one? Yep. Um, do you actually want to walk through this a little bit? Sure. Um, so far we've only had three examples, maybe four examples. Um, one of them is this amazing project by Oscar Stahlberg. If I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, sorry if I'm not. He's a game designer and he's been building um, town building toy so this is sort of like a city generator and in here he's already defined about 387 components which a lot of the components could be you know a single floor house and then a, a sec two floor house and there could be an arch there could be a ladder there could be a stairway and when you when the cursor clicks on the in the world there will be a new building extruded and the building the which building is being extruded will be defined by its, its surrounding so you can see that when there whenever there's a new one coming out um, it sort of morph and merge with the surrounding so that's probably um, defined by the 378 components here hmm. so this one's uh, that one in particular is leaning towards procedural generation yes um which is sort of loosely related but perhaps not tightly related mm. yeah and if we then look into um another project which is this one uh So um, UIBot is a project that has a database of different kind of style for this dashboard. Some of them, the dashboard have, you know, a blue column over here and a thicker line here. Um, the font size is different, the font type is different. And as you click on style again, it changes to a different style for the same dashboard. And sometimes it, ha it hide the column and then put it on top. But essentially, it's using the same information. It's di displaying the same data, um, but the design can be changed as you generate. Hmm. And then you had one other one. Should we take a look at this one? Uh oh, I just moved it. Okay. Quick. This one seems to be procedural related as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. But it's using, so in, in here, this is more visible on the, in the red box over here. These are all of the images that it's using to generate the canvas on the right. Hmm. Okay, so I think this one might be kind of capturing best what we're trying to do today. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of 
same data displayed in many different ways. In this case, it's actually a pretty simple set of data. And then they're actually working more on just like UI generation. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think actually another example, maybe that's worth it to pull up is um, the 100 rabbits. Because I think this kind of captures what I was thinking. Um, there's like a main site part. Um, oh wait, actually it's that. How do, do you know how to get to like that, like XCIV, whatever one? X, um, I think it's XXIIVV. Yeah. So this person, um, this is like a collection of all of his projects. Um, spanning these categories, audio, visual, research, and random. Um, but what's really interesting on the top right is he has like three different views for the same, uh, for kind of like visualizing aspects of like the metadata and data related to all these projects that he's been working on. Um, so here's a calendar, and this is just um, uh, organized by date. Um, and you'll see like the, the dating mechanism is just, this is a special like, um, I guess like system or like dating process that he's he's used for his own projects. So you have like the calendar, you have um, this journal view, and you'll see that like across the different categories, see so like each view like uh, kind of gives different information. So in this this one right here, we're kind of seeing like a GitHub style like commit thing, um, but we also see it color coded by like the category that he's been working on. So you can see he's been at least in the last whatever chunk of time this is, has been mostly focused on visual. 1900 hours. 1900 total hours. Um, so you see a mix of like his travels, projects he's working on. Seems like maybe last time he worked on it. Mm -hmm. And then his last view, Tracker, which is pretty interesting. So this is another view. You get to kind of see which projects he's most active on right now. So you can see this one called whatever, I won't try to pronounce that, but this tool right here, he's been very, very active on very recently, as of eight days ago. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think this is kind of like maybe captures the, the essence of like what we're trying to do here. It's like mm -hmm. take a base data set and display it in multiple ways that provide different information depending on what you're trying to get at the time. Um, but yeah. Uh, side note, did we switch to science and technology category? We did, yeah. We did, yeah. okay, cool. Um, yeah, all right, so we've got a blank glitch project. Um, I guess we should maybe, the first thing we should do is just kind of chat and like brainstorm what we think might be interesting to do mm -hmm. as a small experiment. Um, initially I was thinking um, we can take some base data set. Um, and then see how we can transform it multiple ways, depending on like what the need is. Okay. Um, do you, that's kind of abstract. Do you have a data set you're thinking about, or? Um, actually, you know, one other person we should probably look at is Yoshiki. Mm. Um, it's works. Sorry? We can search here. Search. Yoshiki. So Yoshiki has been doing some interesting stuff that's kind of caught our eyes recently. Um, but this bit about data-driven design. So in this instance, if we pop it open, there's um, some data set that uh, is being referenced underneath. And we'll see that he's built this like really complex interface to modify that interface. So let's skip ahead a little bit. So you can see he's kind of like modifying various aspects of the data. And very, very quickly, this is where we think it's interesting if this was like a tool for like uh, users or individuals. He is designed right here. So I think this is kind of like a key point right here that
So, given these examples, I think the point right here from this tweet is I think that the maybe if we like just create like a fake data set just to try, mm. um, that we. Um, this kind of leads me to think that we should use like a JSON object or something like that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just some structure that we can iterate over and maybe it's like each person is attached to like, uh, if it's like a user account or something, each person is attached to like some chunk of data. Mm -hmm. All of it looks exactly the same. It's like a standardized format that we can reliably access. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could start with. Are you thinking about creating that data set or finding the data set? It might be easier uh, to create it ourselves. And okay. we'll just like, if for example, we do users or something, we should maybe just have like three users and we can just go for that. Mm -hmm. Or even honestly, one user, because yeah, we can we can just visualize that individual user's data. So I think we can create a small little thing that we can play around with. Mm -hmm. um, would it be, would something like a data set of all types, all types of rectangles work? Or are you thinking about something more practical? All types of rectangles. Yeah, so if we just draw a rectangle and style it differently mm -hmm. and put all of those style data in a JSON file to mm. try to loop through them. I'm thinking more like, um, I don't think we have to do this, but like if we go the user route, it's like we have a user and we have some information about them, maybe like the places that they've been most recently their entrance or something like that. So we have like that type of information, textual data. Okay. And then we do whatever we want. And perhaps that includes like, I don't know, using some sort of shapes or things like that to represent like aspects of it. Okay. But yeah. not necessarily. I guess. Even things like, you know, the top 10 cities in France or mm. that would work, right? Yeah, something like that would also work. Okay. You are you were you had like a small little thing for that already, right? Yeah, it was in here, is it? Yeah. Go ahead. I've been doing a lot of coding practice on Glitch, and in here, this is a collection of all the practice which you can come visit if you want to and remix any of the project. But in here, there is a show JSON in HTML project where I have a small JSON file of the top top five cities in France and in each of these it also lists out the department number of citizens and image and monuments I'm not sure if this is enough but there are five cities here mm -hmm. and what this does right now is that it loop through the cities. On when you click next city button, it just go through the next city. So we have more information than that inside here. So maybe we can do something interesting with it. So we have number of citizens. Um, so we're just using the image and the name basically. Mm -hmm. Department. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm not quite sure either. So we probably wouldn't touch that. But then there's also monuments. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Because I mean, I can imagine us making like a UI for this, but I don't know. Like, we can create multiple UIs and then toggle between them, right? Mm -hmm. um, sort of curious to learn a little bit more. Responsibility driven design? <laughs> I mean, I guess so. It's a design technique in object oriented programming. By using client server model, it focuses on the contract by considering the actions that the object is responsible for.
Because I don't know necessarily if like just creating a bunch of like, like maybe if we go back to this example, it feels like there's more to it, right? There's like rules, like, let's see. Example, it'll just combine a variety of different rules. Maybe uh, rules related to color, rules related to the sizing of these uh, things right here. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it's not like hard coding every single one of these examples. It's just combining these. It could be because it's so so similar. I don't think you would create like this template and then create that template. You know, because both of these were incredibly similar, except for like they just switched the rule for color. It feels like coded. Each one. Mm. It's not. Let's see how many. Stuff. How many? Does it feel like a lot? Yeah. Is there somewhere we can find uh, a set of? What if we could replace the process? So this is. What if we replace the process of designing UIs with well bots? an infinite amount of UI designs to choose from. So they built like a rule set and allowed it to kind of explore that space of designs. The implementation uses a name generator, vatar.cc. UI bot is built using reactive styled components. Who is this person? Hmm. Like, it's cool. Um. Hmm. So there's two different like approaches. There's this approach. Uh, how do we get back to the actual tool? Click on the great part. It is basically the same. Mm hmm. And then there's also this approach where the information from each view is not necessarily the same. It tells mm -hmm. you something different. Mm -hmm. There's an interface for every single variable. Prototype tool for yeah. designers with previous experience with all of those things. I wonder if there is a tool we can build for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do we have a need right now, or can we think of a need for our all hundred rabbits? Um, yeah. Um, I think, wow, I'm wondering, like, is we could start it today, or we could kind of just go for a more, like, a little small, tiny experiment type of thing. Mm -hmm. If he used... The creator of UI bot used um, name generator and color, mm -hmm. library for color manipulation, and also avatar. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can just create a little card um, inside the card tweet, or, or, or even without that, just the avatar, the style of the card changes. Mm -hmm. So then, because, let me think, because I think you could, um, like the name might be different in the HTML element, but the element will be the same mm -hmm. with the same class that you could grab. Mm -hmm. Templates are like bits that you like tack on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking at this because this is what they do too much. Tailing is different. Companionated pre designed components. So you can, okay. Ooh, okay. I guess we could go in and in JavaScript and apply like. Uh, color rules. Let's see what it can. Because the other thing we can do is just with JavaScript, we can directly grab like various CSS properties of a HTML element. And is maybe we should just not touch this right now. Yeah. Okay. Do a straight in CSS. Okay. Fine. Pull these and see what's up. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Click on some other stuff. Oops. Maybe a different URL or something. Uh oh. Go to Google first. Go 
Gravatar. How about that? How about instead of trying to make that part dynamic, we'll just throw. Mm. That could be a helpful little thing we get done today, because I think we've talked of, like Unsplash has been brought up some. Do we have an account or something already? Con, how con? These are all photos that anybody can use. All right. Anyways, we got one point four million checkbox. Oh. You cannot replicate the core user experience. Cannot. Do not abuse too many requests will get your access turned off. Usually, I think they refer to like a bot pinging it like every second or something. Mm -hmm. Something ridiculous. We can pull this to this window. Okay, we'll get the API key. Okay. Okay, so setting up an application. We've registered an account. There's libraries. Looks like unsplash.js. You can get a random photo. So it's an NPM library. Um, um, the first thing we need to do is kind of design like a basic card and like where everything's going to get placed. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I think you could probably. Um, so we need a card. Yeah, container or something. And then in there we probably. I think yeah, we can add the stuff we know we need, and then if we need to like wrap those and more for the design. We can. It's up to us. And then next, it would be good to, for example, name could be my name. And maybe we can just add an image for now, and then we'll go in and plug in dynamic stuff because that'll require like a whole other, yeah, just a whole bunch of other stuff. Fine, we'll CSS that. Yeah. Uh, What's that? Max width, maybe one hundred and fifty. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll be we'll be editing all of these numbers multiple times. And then we could call the, what do I have for the class name? Name container, image container, card container. Card container, name container, image container. And then I probably want to make it flex. Name container padding, uh, maybe add like 
put 10 pixels, 10 pixels, that's it. Oh, I want to add padding on the left. And then card container, background color, gray, does it show? Oh, Dane, you're actually really, really quick on the CSS. With, uh, what should be the width? 500 pixel? Um, mistyping on the background color, and then it should fix. Oh, I see. Color. Yeah. So if we count this out, all right. How does it choose? Oh, it's just doing full. Yeah. And then, right. Okay, and now I, we probably want the image and the the name to flow in the middle a little, instead of sticking to the top left corner. In in that case, do I add padding in the card container? Um, I think margin. And do you like margin auto or something? It'll like make sure that margin on the top and the bottom of the image is the same. Mm. I I believe I'm not a hundred percent. It might have to be like margin top auto and margin bottom auto or something. Like that. I'm not quite sure. Oh, padding works. Okay, cool. Maybe we can remove margin then. Hmm. Um, we could give it a brighter color. Well, that looks too blue. Give me, let's pick a color. Hex code, hex code. Uh, name container, font weight, does it do anything? Bold, does that do anything? Yep. Okay. Should we add like a description? I feel like it's missing something. Okay. How do you do rounded corner? Uh, I got it. If you go back, it's border radius. And then you specify like, I, you can maybe start with 5px. Cool. And then, yeah, do you want to add a description component? Yeah. So then isolate that as like an, like an H, Something, I don't know. And P should be good. Um, description about this person or description about this card, this project? Mm. I guess you can put description of the project. So if we share an image of it, like, or, mm. or you can make it more relevant, right? Because just the description of this of yourself. Mm. The person hanging out on Earth. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, you can so the P tag also picked up the font weight. Yeah. Or yeah. So then you could uh, do name container H if you or H three if you just want it on. Uh, we just want it on the text. I think it also picked up the, oh, the padding we want, yeah. Yeah, so we could just do H3. Okay. Or does it do it already? Yeah, it does it oh, already. Oh, okay, cool. So all H's have some font weight. Yeah. All right. Um. There was, um, 
do we want to add more information to the card to make it or should we try it we could try it with what we have right now and just see what yeah. we can do uh, javascript wise to kind of like mix it up do we want this card to be focused on main or focus on places oh yeah oh because the images were pulling right i think for images can you pull right person yeah search for a photo by keyword i mean you can do person or something individual yeah yeah that might yeah that could work okay so that image will change to a person because mm -hmm. other things like i could imagine we added like maybe like the card can display some information about like like i don't know like twitter stats or something like that yeah um i don't mind actually just adding that i think we can I think that would be manageable because I see it as three components that we're moving around. The name and description, which kind of like are unified. The follower, following, and like whatever information. And then the image. So three components. What's the third? Like follower, following, like numbers or something like that. Mm. Or other information. I'm just thinking we can put some numerical information. Like, it could also be location. Yes, we could do that. Uh, Can we do as a separate div? Because um, that way we can uh, like style it and move it around and perhaps they're not like right next to each other as they are right now. Yeah. Location container as a Hmm. Should we put like a label or something like location colon SF or something? And then right now I have flex flex wrap flex on mm -hmm. and so it's displaying it in row. I think we want something with flex wrap so that it flex wrap well oh the flex direction thing was probably not working it was a uh, there was a mistype oh so maybe we can see what that did or that was going to do okay so it just does that so it must be like the default and then that hmm I'm not sure because I think we would want yeah maybe we can sketch a couple of like potential cards that we that this could make yeah so this is this is the card container and then we would probably have an image Let's create an artboard. Um, so this could be an image. And then
Do we want to... I don't want to add like three. I feel like three would be good. Can we add a little more? There's no case in this if I'll... Oh, like that? That could work. <laughs> um, it could help if the transparency goes down a little. Yeah. Um, also, maybe instead of saying location, can we just do that like red pin marker? What do? Oh. That little the, emoji one. Uh, yeah. This one? Yeah. My emoji picker for some reason isn't working. So. Yeah. What else do people usually put? Or I don't know. For some reason I want to add more, but I think this is plenty. Okay. Um. So if we want to do this, how will we do the CSS? Because this needs to be in one column, and this is one column. Mm -hmm. I think you put in a div, you could put all of that information for now. Put all of this in a div? Yeah. Well, that would work for this, but if we want to be more flexible and we want to break them apart, then that would not work. Yeah. Yeah. Should we read up on like grid? Yeah. CSS grid. Leave that. Um a complete guide to grid. We can also use raster CSS. Would that that'll cut it for us. Would that make this generative part easier or harder? It's hard to it's hard to know right now. What if we do something like uh, CSS grid, CSS grid layout. Display grid, we're using display flex. Mm -hmm. So then you specify grid columns. Grid template areas. Header, header. Left, middle, right. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you allow those to be selected like that. Yeah. Hmm. Grid definitely seems the way to go, at least, but. Uh, there's this other approach right below. Mm -hmm. Display grid, grid template columns, and then I don't know what FR stands for, but it seems to create three template, three rows, columns, mm -hmm. with a gap between the columns, and then div class wrapper, and they're just adding like three elements to each row, sort of. Mm -hmm. Um, I sort of think the top one is better because you can declare almost like a custom uh, the first example from that website.
This one, this, or, oh wait, we need to move it back so they can see, but like, I think this is going to be the best. Okay, let's try to do it. So, in this case, we probably want each one of them is in a separate div, or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because then if we have it all in separate divs, the pieces, we're just moving them around. We can just change the class names. Um, or we can change the grid area CSS bit for each of them. Actually, wait, now that I think about this, sometimes you're going to want them to be together, right? Like, for example, perhaps you want the name and the description to be, like, next to each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think we might need to, like, actually programmatically create all of these divs, create all of this inside, like, JavaScript, mm -hmm. so that sometimes we'll be like, actually, we want the, the title and we want the description to be in the same um, container, like, referencing uh, this again. Like, oh yeah, we actually want the, them both to fill up the main content area together. And then other times we won't, because I don't think we're going to have the, the fine grained flexibility if they're separate here to like uh, assign them both middle, for example, and it'll just put them both here. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can, I think that, I think we can handle that. Do you want to give it a shot? I'm not sure how to do that. We'll be like uh, creating elements inside of JavaScript and then like but assigning you, all the properties and stuff in JavaScript. How do you then create CSS? You can um, attach CSS prop. You can you can update all CSS and properties in JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So on on click, every single card will look different. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looping through a series of CSS mm -hmm. where is CSS structure stored somewhere or are we just generating Yeah, we can, I spot? think, I think we can store like the data for like various templates initially or just go for like a rule based kind of like approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we would basically store this, the, all the all the textual data and the link in a little data thing. Mm -hmm. It gets fed in, piped in, and then given all of this stuff, we'll go and generate basically something like this. And we'll kind of create all the elements necessary in the JavaScript, and then at the very, very end, we have this card container. We'll just, boom, we'll append the entire thing inside the card container. Why can't that be in HTML? Um, because occasionally, I think we're going to want the P tag to be inside of here. Otherwise, they're going to kind of like be seen, they're going to be kind of separate like this. Mm. And I guess it was only because like when I'm looking at how the CSS grid thing works, mm -hmm. You specified these template areas, and let's just say we were using this 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 type of template area thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I don't actually. Maybe you could. We should try it. Maybe. Can we put like multiple things in the grid middle spot? I'll copy this and I'll chuck it in. Where should I chuck it in? So if we added another div with the exact same class,
Okay, they're overriding each other right now. According to Bone saying that you just put a div in the middle region and put stuff inside that div. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. So replace the main content area with two divs, for example. Let's delete this. Thanks for the tip. Okay, let's try. So I'm getting water. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Um. So if we go back to the card example that we're we started. We're going to want to have a few different like grid styles, but this one right here, at least when we had it a second ago, it was kind of like two sections. So let's see, is it that? Okay, so something like that. So this is two sections. Um, and if we're switching to grid, we can at least start and do that first. So in the CSS right here, we have flex. We're going to remove flex. Um, in the body, I'll add that display code. Now we're displaying grid. Um, left, left, right. So maybe we can do, should we try to emphasize text or emphasize the picture? So I'm gonna create like the grid right here. I'm thinking like left, this section, we can put the image in for now and then mm -hmm. Like I can name these both right, right is my understanding, and it'll kind of be act as like one. It'll like it'll act as like one big section. Mm. I think we can emphasize on. Yeah, let's emphasize on image. Image. Okay. So let me make that two sections. Okay. So then. As is my understanding, I think up here we need to go and attach those grid classes. So we have the div right here and we have the div right here. And we need to give it the correct styling. So basically something like this for the image. Um, this one right here. So we'll give it the style right there. And then, oh, what am I doing? And then the text also needs its own.
The problem you're having is that the grid is applied to the body tag and you apply the grid areas to elements that are not direct descendants of body. Hmm. Okay, so let's remove then we'll, let's remove the card container for now. Thanks for the help again. Okay, so, okay, yeah, so the, they went next to each other. Um, hmm, so then adding the background card, like the background card color or whatever. Oh, okay, so you we can apply the grid to the card itself. Okay, okay, let's um, let's actually go back a step then. Okay, so card are we container. doing self study or taking a class? Uh, this is I guess self study. Should we? Uh, can we walk through a UI bot a bit just to? Oh yeah. We're hoping to like. Or maybe you can go for it. Yeah, we're we're trying to explore what we're broadly calling or other people are calling data driven design. And the idea is that you could have a um one of the insight what we saw on Twitter is that when you're doing front end UI work, front end interface visual design work, a lot of the times you are really just like manipulating and reordering data structure that's in a JSON file or anywhere. And so someone was like wondering if you can create generate a bunch of different data structure combinations and then loop through them so this is a more complex example than what we're doing but this is a dashboard you can see that there are numbers here um, and then as you click on style again it go through different style we order them some of them have more columns or more rows or more padding between these boxes um, so what we're trying to do is to do a version of this that's much much simpler with just an avatar a name a description and a location um, and this is sort of just us trying to teach each other and also learn more about coding and design in general Oh yeah, so the bit the change I was gonna do was add the grid code to the card container. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's a little less scary when you have a another friend doing it with you. I don't know if I would be doing this on my own. Yeah. And also we also have friends like you joining us, which has been helping a lot because sometimes we'll be staring at the screen and be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and people chime in and then help us figure things out, which is awesome. So my thinking here is like, um, actually we don't even need the header header part because we're not even using these parts. So really our grid template is just left, left, right. That's it. Um, Maybe we can pop this open and just make sure it's doing what we expect. Oh, it's doing what we expect, I think. Yep, so this is taking up the left, right? Whoa, the left one takes up so much space. Do you know why? Not quite clear. That's that's more than double of the, the right side. Mm. Um. So we have the name container and we have the image container. So maybe we can do some styling here as oh, well. Oh, is it because of the 10 EM here? Oh, what so does there's... that stand for? We might want to search. I think it has to do with responsive. Um, with... CSS, CSS EM. Calculator represents the font size of the element. 
So do we want to just like constrict the width of like image container? I don't know what that's gonna do. I think it's because we're calling it twice, right? Left, left, and so it's saying ten em plus ten em. Oh, one em is roughly the size of the capitalized letter m. The convention is a holdover from typesetting in the printing press. Um, let's see. Oh, this auto bit. Let's see. Let's see what the three parameters are here, because I think auto might be just letting it fill up the entire space of the screen. Mm. Grid template columns, CSS. Um, defines the line names and the track sizing functions of the grids columns. Oh, okay, okay. So basically. Each one of these is like the, the, the width for that column. Oh. Okay, so we're basically specific for, for this, we're specifying, um, we're specifying three columns, left, left, right. The mm -hmm. first left is 10 EM, the second is auto, and the last is another 10 EM. Mm. So I think all we actually need is left and right, and then we can just, we can just like, do anything we want for this. And perhaps for us, maybe we can switch this to pixels. Sure. So like maybe like 300 PX. Or even VW, pixels. which is which may be more responsive. Oh, VW. Uh, Vertical weight. Right. No. Um, uh, I, I'm not too familiar with this. How much do you think? Like five? I don't know how much five is. And if we pop this up, we can see what's happening. Uh oh. Relative size unit FR to define responsive ratios. Actually, as we were looking at that one. Um, one FR, three FR is a ratio of one to three, for example. Oh, okay. So we have one to two right here. Oh. That's what it meant. <laughs> That's yeah, that, that's probably a good idea. Oh, CSS. <laughs> Learn so much about CSS. Okay, so we can do a 2 to 1, I guess. Because yeah. we were thinking that anyways, right? So 2 FR, 1 FR. Um, ooh, that, that squishes it on this one. But on this one, okay, I think we're getting exactly what we we're expecting. Yeah, that's like, let's see, 5, yeah. set, yep, exactly double. So this is 2 to 1 right here. And I think if you look at the image tag, um, I put a max width on this image tag. Yes. That's why it's not growing. So we can remove that. Oh, if did you, you put it in the CSS? In CSS, yeah. Uh, down, down below. Got it. Yeah. So we'll just rip that out, I guess, for now. No. Um, although we do still need a width, so I guess width. Uh, uh, oh, because as we, if we let the width take up the entire space that it has. Mm -hmm. um, It'll also be like way too, perhaps way too, like uh, the height might be too much. It might come out of the card. Mm. Oh, so we can do height auto, because the height and then let the width fill up whatever space it needs to fill up. Oh wait, uh oh, how come I did height auto? <laughs> Give me back max width. <laughs> I felt more. I felt safe. <laughs> bring me, bring me back. Let's try six hundred pixels. What does that do? Yeah, so it'll take six hundred, but then the height will be too too big. Mm. What we should really do is, especially if we're going to start pulling in like images dynamically, we need to be handling images differently depending on what the width, the dimensions are of that image. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. Let's change the ratio. Uh, add it as a background image. Hmm. Could. Yeah. 
and then text overlay that would that wouldn't have like too many like uh different designs i feel like though mm. i think right now we we want to keep four components so that we can create different layouts I was wondering if um, if we can change the ratio to one to two. I won't mm. work. Oh, we didn't reload. I don't think. Oh, let me see. For the. I'm confused. Okay, so yeah, I guess now it's filling up the space. So it looks like the grid will basically, like, if it if it if the image takes up more space, the grid will just naturally like uh, resize itself mm -hmm. to uh, keep the image within that space. Mm -hmm. But when it's smaller, it's okay. So maybe. So we have a max width, can we also just specify like width auto? So it'll like keep growing, keep growing, keep growing, at some point it stops growing and then oh oh no, it just stays that size. Can we try searching like auto width image or res image auto resize responsive? Percent. Like a hundred percent of the space that it's been given. Yep. Certain size, right? It'll be too much. Yeah. Oh, we can max height. You think? I think. <laughs> Cuevo. Um, one second, we can do a quick overview. Yeah? Yeah. I think we should show uh, the Yoshiki thing and... Um, this little tool right here, basically, there's a, there's a couple of different elements. We have like the, the quantitative information on top, we have some icons, and if we click style again, you'll see it goes, it kind of goes through a bunch of different styles for explaining the same information mm -hmm. um, and then Yoshiki yeah so here's the other thing that um, we've found pretty interesting uh, no we didn't we didn't no. build that <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to build a simpler <laughs> version of yes it. modular UI so and then here's the other one that we thought was really cool for like data-driven design kind of stuff that data yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, you can select various aspects. So we kind of want to like explore this idea a little bit more. Um, Maybe we could show like click the middle of the. Yeah, video. I guess when it gets. Sounds like Cuervo has seen this example before. Yeah. So it's kind of on the same page as us. Yeah. But, uh, so in general, we're interested in you know this world of generative the design, designing at scale. Um, hopefully, at some point, genetic design genetic algorithm yeah. but we're trying to make baby steps right mm -hmm. now and the thing we're building is sort of like a profile card you want to um, go to the figma one yeah a profile card like this yes components ai yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then you know there's a profile image that we're going to pull in from unsplash api and then we're going to use a name generator and a description generator, maybe a location generator. And hopefully on every button click, it will rearrange this, these components. Um, and then each click is going to give us a different layout. That's what we're trying to accomplish right now. Yeah. So this is really pushing our CSS skills to the limit. I think this is probably where we're all weakest. So I mean, it's it's good practice. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I, would it be useful to like do a few different like potential cards so that we can kind of start thinking about the rules that we need about the relationships between yeah, these elements? Yeah, sounds good. Um, in this case, we can duplicate some of these artboards. We're using Figma, which is sort of like a interface design tool. Sounds good. Thanks, Corvo. So in this case, it needs to crop too, right? Hmm. It would be really cool to have like an image like cropping as well, yeah. I've seen a stack overflow thing. Hmm. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe the crop isn't the most elegant crop in the world, but we can probably figure out how to crop an image of this and then throw it in. Get the nice little circular. We're doing, um, oh yeah, we'll do, uh, we'll pull people images from the Unsplash. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, this text box is center aligned. Also, if you have uh, vertical cards. Uh -huh. Should we have is one? There, yeah, is there like a mix of things we can do with vertical cards that perhaps we couldn't do with horizontal? My guess is something like that, yeah. Yeah. Just all of it aligned in a vertical column. Yeah. Come back in a sec. Also want to color some of them. Whoa. This kind of feels a little like a conference name tag. I don't know if we want to mix font all red or go for something crazier. I think that feels pretty good. Are there other 
name tag, profile name tag layout. I suppose In some cases with the UI bot, it was hiding information as well. So I can see how, you know, there could be a few cases where the description and the location isn't used at all. Hmm. I was just Googling name tag layout and seeing what shows up. Yeah, the reversal of the two. Like every single one could be reversed. Yep. We could also at some do something like um, in some of the version, the image is used as the background of the canvas, like what, according to Bo, was suggesting. Mm. Yeah, because if we're going to be cropping images, it would be, I think it would be a very similar process for making cropping and making it backward, background instead. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, there are way more combination, but this could give us a view of. I think it's somewhere to start for sure. Yeah. Um, the ones that seem like the are going to be easiest to begin with are going to be these three right here, mm -hmm. and then yeah, this one too. Yeah. So. Maybe we can maybe we can start with that and then see where we can go from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then it looks like um, we can come back to vertical. So this is going to be changing the grid, the underlying grid that we're using mm -hmm. right now. Or okay, so these I think I kind of see like I see like let me think. I think I see four different grids here. Like I see this grouping of grids, mm -hmm. and this is just uh, a left and a right component. Yeah. I see this grouping, which seems to be a top and a bottom component. Mm -hmm. um, or actually, no, sorry. This is actually four different bits. It's the top, and then it's the bottom component, which has three different grid yeah. bits. Yeah. And then this one might just be like one, one mm -hmm. grid, and that's top, it. Bottom. Um, this one is, I think, one. Or actually, maybe it's two. I don't know. Like a top and bottom half to half almost again. Mm -hmm. This one's a little different. I think this one's one. So let's start with this one. We already actually have this grid. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. So then occasionally, maybe the, the name goes somewhere else. Um. Also, do we want to just fix the, the max, rather than letting this be as large as we want, can we, should we just fix it? Sure. Go for it. Um, well, let's see, so we have the image is taking up the space that it needs to take, but then the container or something, I think it's because we're using FR, which is the... Um, Ratio thing? Let's see, according to B said it was the... Yeah, the relative size to define re responsive ratios. So maybe we can actually switch that to something hard coded. Um, line twenty four. Maybe um, I don't know. Whatever you think. 
Is that too much pressure? Yeah. <laughs> uh... There's a mouse out room really quick. Oh, EM brace. How about pixels? So we just know how much space we're dealing with. This breaks too. Did the FR break? Wait, go back to the CSS. Left, right, height. The color background for some reason is still dynamic. Like it's uh Oh the Because the other the there. other bits are all um hard coded. Yeah, just that that blue background needs to be like hard coded too. Oh why? Just so like we're working with like a fixed size card and then we'll like manipulate elements around that fixed size. Okay. I don't know where it's happening though. I think it's just because it's not defined. Oh yeah, okay, so then we can be explicit. Max width. Or maybe a fixed width. So that it makes sure that it it fits that text below how we want. I think you said uh, you might have had a mistyping. OX oh. rather than PX. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's just hard coded for now. Okay, mm -hmm. so then. Um, Let's see. So the first thing that we wanted to do was potentially flipping, mm. and then we can we can toggle on the circle or not. Mm -hmm. And then this is a different thing, so we'll have to think about how we break apart this because that's going to be important for the next one, anyways. Mm. Um, so let's look at how we're how our elements are kind of like organized right now. We have the image container. Mm -hmm. We have the name container, and it contains all three elements right now. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I'm thinking we're going to want to just have like the data bits here, so the image, URL, the name, this, and this as like um, a little like maybe JSON objects on mm -hmm. the JavaScript side. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be able to like choose a template and then plug in the data where it needs to be on that specific template. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason why I'm thinking that is because when we get to doing this one, the these are all in separate grids mm -hmm. in, our, in our ideally. Mm -hmm. In this one, they're all in the same grid. And so we need a, a system for placing these onto the HTML camp, or yeah, as HTML elements that allows for both of these to exist. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that actually leads me to believe I think we need to make those in JavaScript. Yeah, this entire thing, this entire chunk right here, needs to be written in JavaScript. All right. And this one too. Everything, everything, including the card container, right? Um, I think we can keep that. Oh here. wait, because even okay, so for now the card container is fixed for all of these bottom ones. Potentially the card container is not fixed. Yeah. But you could leave the card container on the HTML and just select it and update its width and height. Can we not select? <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. Can we not select and update the 
everything inside as well? Um, we could do that, but then sometimes we're going to want to break it up. Like maybe it's not going to be all in one div. And that's where like I think you need to inject it with using JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work when we had each one of them in a separate div? Um, that was actually fine. Like, but then we maybe we would probably give them all different grid areas if we had them in separate divs. So sometimes, so sometimes these three elements right here will be in separate divs, and sometimes they won't be in separate divs. Mm. Which way it's easier? I think we should write it in the code. Okay. <laughs> write it in the code. Huh. Write it in JavaScript. Oh, yeah, in, in, in JavaScript, yeah. <laughs> um, so in this case, I'm going to copy. Oh. Put all of this in JavaScript for reference. So I guess the first thing I'm off the bat is we can just select that um, the, the big container. Mm. Document that query selector. I forgot the name. Right, container. Yeah, yeah. And then initialize the variable is the only thing. Oh. Yeah. And then so it's like dot create, yeah. So I guess we're basically just initially at least creating the exact sample in code. Is the thought? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Dang, all the hotkeys. So uh, quick. Description. Location. Oh, oops. Uh, when you're creating the elements, I, uh, you pass in like the element type. So you might pass in for the then the name container one, you actually pass in just div, uh, line two. You pass in div, and then you can assign it a class of that, and we can grab uh, it, yeah. So you pass in div, and then the other one's whatever it's supposed to be. So img, uh, p and p, both of those are p elements, uh, as a string. Yeah. Then uh, the the name or or yeah yeah we still need like the actual name element. What name? Um, like way way your your that um. one was an H three. Well, how do you name these? Uh, maybe name this one name and then remove the one above. I think we can create it when we need it. I'm not quite sure what we need to name it because it'll be like different depending on if we're breaking it up or not. The like the container div or whatever, and then that'll be an H3 instead. What's happening with the not found on the right side? Let's check that. Back to the code. 
Oh, it's trying to... The CSS is trying to wrap stuff, I think. Yeah, go back to the code. In the HTML. Hmm. What are these? We don't need this either, do we? That's weird. I'm confused. What? <laughs> I don't think it liked the script for some reason. Yeah, it breaks. I'm wondering if it has to do with this. Wait, H3. Oh, right here? This doesn't exist. Card container? It does. What happens if you cut this out? Something related. Is it create element or create elements? For this? For line three. Yeah, I think it's just create element. Okay, we broke something right here. Might have been this last one. <laughs> Hashtag debugging. Okay, it was this line. That's confusing, huh? Is location something in JavaScript? No. Or I, you should be able to, yeah, that should be fine. It's console. Oops, no, not replay. I'm so confused. So I guess it is just the word location. Mm -hmm. It must be, yeah, so you're, yeah. So we'll say loc. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess continue then. It was just that one random thing. Mm -hmm. So, what's... Um, okay, so we're, we're, I guess a good first challenge would maybe just be create that HTML structure. So we have the, the raw components right there, mm -hmm. and now we need to set some stuff about it. So let's set the, the inner stuff to it. So the all of them need inner HTML. So our name will be slightly different I think. We need to add an image element inside of the name component or the image component. And yeah, none of this will show up on uh, JavaScript because it's not connected at all. It has no clue this stuff exists. Or in the HTML, my bad. Name. Oh, according to B, let me see. If we did that copy thing, are you able to see it on the, the computer? I think so. Airdrop. Oh, okay. You go for it. Uh-oh. Here. Okay.
This is what I meant by setting the image to a background with the size cover to make it fill the container. Size. Does this, it, does this image just like fit? Like it, it, it doesn't look like it's. My guess is this image is in a rectangle as a background. Okay, so let's see. It's the image card. Okay, right here, background. The background size CSS property sets the size of the element's background image. The image can be left to its natural size, stretched or constrained if there's available space. It's set to a background image and using the background size. Size cover. So the third one. Oh, this is sort of the cropping thing. In the HTML, if you replace the 500, 600 with a different size, you will see the image still fits in spite of the changing image dimension. Oh, this is exactly what we... Okay, I get it now. Yeah. So it'll just kind of just fill up the space that it can, and if the... It'll crop off either the height or the width, depending on which dimension is, like, too, too long or whatever, or mm. too, too big. Okay, so we'll get we'll we'll get back to this, but yeah, I think this is what we need to use. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? Let, okay, since we're on it right now, maybe we'll just do it right now. Um, oh wait, we just removed the image. <laughs> okay, so let's we'll keep that tab up, and then we'll come back to that after we finish uh, adding the elements back on using JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the help, both of you. Image well. Ah, uh, yeah, image.source, I think, as well. Yeah. Okay, so then we need to create the two dibs for this example, and then we'll append um, the image to one, and then the other three elements to the other which basically is just copying the structure uh, below. So we'll create, we can create one div called the image container, and then we'll append the image, and then uh, name container, I guess, for now, and then we'll append all the rest of the content. So we call it... Image container is fine. Or, yeah. Uh, div, and then uh, add the document dot create element bit, oh. and then same thing for name container. We can probably get, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it like that. But there's probably a better like naming convention we could use there, uh, which would be useful. So then, uh, the command is like append child, so image container dot append child and we'll append the image. So it's adding it inside. Yep. Uh, and then I think you just do it in the round brackets uh, instead of the equals. Yep, and then pass in uh, image. 
And that's it. So you're, you're appending the image element inside of the image container element. And then for the name container, we'll just append in order. Uh, so should I be things. showing right now? Uh, no, because yeah, because the image container is also something that we created in JavaScript. So none of this is uh, visible to the HTML just yet, but we're, we're close. And in here, we would append all three. Yeah, we can go name, description, location Comma. in that order. Mm, I think you gotta just do three of these. Oh. Yeah. You might be able to just do one, but yeah, it's fine. For, for this, it's a bit quicker. Um, so then one other thing is we need to add the styling to the image container and the name container. So I believe it's, you might want to Google it, um, or I can quickly, JavaScript set CSS style. So it's just uh, dot style dot property. So image container dot style and then the property being grid area is going to be left equal to left and apparently it doesn't like grid area so there's i think another way to write it mm -hmm. maybe it's worth it to do this on the grid template areas or uh, but the hyphens is uh... the name has to be camel case in JavaScript oh okay so then oh like this yeah I guess so and then uh, quotation string left um, and then name container same thing for grid, grid area, right? And then, um, okay, so these two elements then need to be appended to the, uh, what's the what's the big contain card container, which I think you selected right at the very top. Yeah. Cool, so then, yeah, I don't even think there's an order that matters because they've been given a, a grid section. Uh-oh. Shama? It's not showing me. Uh-oh. We messed up. Still not found. Go back to the script. Hmm. Yeah, card container. Oh, oops. This script needs to be loaded in after the div, I believe, because it's not aware. I don't think it's aware of the elements inside the body. So we like load the elements in the body and then we load the script. Actually, maybe that's not it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ooh, maybe it shouldn't be const. Uh-oh, we just okay, went Chinese. Okay. Well, press uh. enter. Whoa, whoa. What, what's happening? I have no idea. Okay. Whoa. We're back in Chinese mode. What is going on? But you can't write code in Chinese. No. Switch it back. <laughs> okay. That's not it. Yeah. I'm trying to do... A little bit of debugging here. Okay. So, selecting the card. Maybe we... 
make sure that it's select. That might get really messy. Um, yeah, go to the... But this one's not showing for some reason. I'm kind of confused why. Okay, it is showing. Okay, so we're getting the card container. That's good. Oh, line 24. Node dot append child must be an instance of a node. Okay. 24. Right here? Yeah. Name container. Um, we can quickly check. So JavaScript add element inside a div. Yeah, create element. Dot append a child. Base use something here dot create text node. Um sort of don't know what this error. Me. I think I do, but nope, this is too specific. It's complaining about the argument, not the object you're calling on. The argument? Wait, it's, it was showing image for like... Yeah. It's this part that's broken right here. It's complaining about name, not name container. Oh, name is line 9. So create element h3. Yeah, so something with the H3 doesn't like. It just added everything. Oh, I think we're confusing ourselves. Because we're, we're using name and name and then name container. Name container and name are both creating elements. Yeah, but they have, those shouldn't be conflicting, I don't think. Okay, let's go see that error again. Must be an instance of a node. So maybe an, an H3 element is not considered a node. Because I think if, if I think if we change this back to P, it's probably gonna work. Just kidding. <laughs> ah. Try div. Um, I'm not okay. What is it then? Is it the name name? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Something's really getting weirdly con why is something So there we can't use look the word location, we can't use the word name in JavaScript as a I don't know if that's is that a legit I don't think that's a legit thing. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Okay, you know what we should do? <laughs> huh? We should call these name tag. Maybe that'll be... 
Okay. That would just avoid do those stuff. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we can actually try what uh, Cuervo and According to Bo were suggesting with the um, display. Your problem is using inner HTML on an H3. It replaces the tag with text. Use inner text. Oh. oh. Wait, try, okay, switch back to name then. And then inner text. Oh, we're learning so many subtle things. I always thought inner HTML was just like um, the uh, universal. <laughs> okay, wait. I have name.inner text equals to wait, wait, shoo. Okay, line 25 now has a problem. Yeah, maybe, we, yeah, we'll switch it back. Name, we'll go name tag. And nine. And then back, oh. That is so... Odd? Yeah, that's odd. Okay. Uh, let's see. You want to do description too? Yeah. Okay. Oh, one off on the uh, bottom one. Oh. Okay. Um, let's see. Don't need that. We don't need that. We, we got too many tabs. We need to pick. Close this. Don't need that. Okay. So the cover. Background size cover, and it might be as simple as. Oh, I should be careful. <laughs> Nothing is ever as simple as it seems, especially with coding. Um, uh oh, I lost that link. I think. Oh, here. Okay, um, why don't we, change, did we give the class, class names to the elements, to the containers? I don't think so. Okay, because I need to select them in the CSS. I'll leave that one open. This we do not need. Um, JavaScript set element class uh, dot. So just dot class list dot add. So right after we create the images, image container dot class list dot add. Um, and the, we'll call it image container. Name container and image container, okay. So now we can go into the CSS and we have image container already. And I'm gonna try this, but maybe we'll have to Google this a little bit more. Um, background, background size cover. My, my, my thinking is that you apply it to the div. Oh wait, but we have a bunch of hard coded image stuff right now. So this is gonna break it. Okay, that, would, that didn't do as expected. 
looks okay. Um, maybe it goes on the image. Oh, wait. Max width and width auto. Oh, we have a max height, so let's remove the max height. Okay, what, so now the big question is what happens as we expand this? Oh wait, oh wait, we hard-coded this. What happens if we put another image? Do we want to get another image from the Unsplash? Person. Let's do Japan before someone. I think you can right click and just get the image address. Source dot unsplash. Uh, is it? No, that's a thank you credit. Sure. Uh, right click. Copy. Oh, that's it. What's source dot? Unsplash dot com. Simple embedding for unsplash photos. Weekly slash Japan. Random Japan image. Oh, it's the weekly image. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I wonder if you can just add random question mark Japan. I'm not quite sure. Uh, go back to the URL. Just slash random slash question Japan. Yeah, and then reload. I think you can just reload, right? With your command R. No, because it's this is the image address. It redirects you oh. to. Nice. That's a cool little trick. Oh. Wait. Scroll down. <laughs> this is a designer. This is like a, I think, design design director at a company called Latis. It's funny. Um, yeah, random from a collection, random from a weekly, random search term. Awesome. Cool. So, where do you want to paste that link? Um, put it put it right in the uh, right here, so it'll read it'll go to that link and then redirect to a random image every single time. That was really really, yep yeah. Oh wait, oh no, does it only do it once? Oh. It sort of gets stuck up on like images. You have to like hit it and reload. But we are getting different images. Yeah, caching, yeah. Probably the caching. <laughs> um, That's cool. Oh, Com wait. Shift Command R. Shift Command R. 
Wait, what did we just do? <laughs> oh, Chrome. Only oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm a Safari person. Do you just like it more, or? Um. There's more syncing between devices, given that I'm I have, like, iPhone and laptop from Apple. Mm. Okay. I don't know if the, I don't know if this piece of code, the background size cover, did anything or not. I think we just got lucky, or something. Oh wait, I think it. Wait. Okay, so maybe can we get this image? Open image in a new tab. Can we... Okay, so this is a very like. Uh, vertical image. Mm -hmm. So if we go in and hard code this image, let's see if we can make sure that it fits. So I'm not using that one. <laughs> image dot source equals. Whoa. Okay, stuff is getting crazy. <laughs> Why are you uploading assets though? Okay. Whoa. I'm not quite sure what happened, but. We'll take it, I guess. Add a semicolon. Okay. Um, you want background color contain, I believe. Oh. You want to tell Mitch, we're coding in a online text editor called Glitch, and background. it actually just like help you to run a project live and refreshes every time you make any code change. So you can actually come to um, come to this link and remix this project because everything's running on the web. Um, I copied, so we'll paste it in the chat if you want to click on it and take a look. Compare the difference between size, contain, and cover here. Can we open up the link that Cuervo shared? Yeah. Yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Size, contain, and cover. Okay. I feel like that's the one we want, right? We want cover. Wait, this is, yeah, we want that. Hmm. Is it because we don't we don't specify Contain clips cover lets it bleed over? Background size. The example. Let's see. Then. It looks like it. Like, is it? Specify a max max height. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so the height right now. What are we using for? Are we using anything for the height? Twenty vh. Mm -hmm. So like nineteen vh. Some so it stays within. Oh man, we're getting somewhere. Let's read it again. So contain clips, cover lets it bleed over. Right now I'm not seeing a difference. Hmm. Do you think it looks okay like that? It's okay. <laughs> it's not great, but it's okay. Wait, let's go switch it back so that it's doing dynamic images again. I believe for your use case, they behave the same way when you specify a max height. Hmm. 
you are setting a background on an image tag, so it doesn't actually have a background image. Yeah. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So if we create a rectangle, if we create a div and use image background, then that might do the thing. This right here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, Cuervo. Um. Use a div and set style.background image equal URL, image URL. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just do it in CSS. There will be equivalent. Yeah, true. Okay, let me copy that. So then the background image uh, URL. URL. Oh my gosh, we're in business. <laughs> we're in business. <laughs> we are in business. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, let me open up the pool. Yeah, this is doing the cropping as expected. Okay. It's caching it. Oh, let's try the background size thing. Background contain. size contain. Oh, yep, you can see it's doubling right there. So it's oh. keeping the dimensions the same and it's doubling it. Now apply border radius to the container. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Click on this, yeah. Is that where we just were? Yeah. Okay. And then no repeat. No repeat to this end, is it? You can also use fit. <laughs> um, what should we? <laughs> what is fit like? I I am I am I, I, at a high level I understand what that would do, but where do you put it? Uh, fit. Yeah, otherwise, like, way too big images, they're just going to be, like, a random, random part of it. Fit will scale the image down, keeping the aspect ratio while to show the entire image in the container. Okay, here it is. Object fit property can have the following. This is the default. Contain. The content is scaled to maintain its aspect ratio while fitting the elements content box. It seems like that's going to be the one we want. And this gets applied to the image itself. We don't want this anymore. What did I say? Object fit. Uh, contain. Is it? Is it, it? It's trying. It's trying. 
I wish we had better, like... I just think it's caching every single time. Yeah, I don't know. Let's use, um... We can open this. Was it command shift R? Yeah. No, well, I think Corvo was talking about on Chrome. This is using Chrome. Oh, Brave? Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, fitting the image right now. We can go back and take a look. Maybe there's a different property too that we're supposed to be manipulating. Or this is supposed to be on the image container. It might have been background clip. Taking a look. Background image fit to fit div. Let's see. Fit background image to a div. Background size contain and cover. Which one are we using right now? Did we use contain? Oh, wait, oops, let's maybe remove that. Just cover. Oh wait, look, that did it. This process of reloading images is not great. If you do background size, it may help. Yeah, I switched it to cover and let me just quickly reread this again. Background size cover to scale the background image to cover the whole div to scale the background image to fit inside the div. Hmm. The cover one seems to be working. Contain wasn't. CSS. How we are, we are all such bugs. <laughs> That's a little more pleasing on the eye. Yeah. Okay. Should we go? I think this is okay for now. Seems to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the bit that we can try first is, okay, wait, wait, we hard coded these. So we'd want to, so if we, if we reverse the text in the image, we would want to also reverse these two, mm. which should be fine. Let's go to the JS. So all of that was like initial setup. And then this CSS is on the card container. Okay, so 
we need to select I think we've already selected that didn't we okay it's the card right here so let me try one thing let me try card dot style dot um grid template columns so grid template columns equals and then we'll flip it so 480 px and 200 px okay so okay so i think it's been flipped Wait, was it, were these the numbers we had, or did we have different numbers? We had 280 px, and I just flipped it. I said 280 and 200 px. This doesn't look exactly flipped, because <laughs> it would, it should fit like the same amount of space since everything's like hard coded. Mm -hmm. Two hundred px width right now, and this is four eighty. So I guess it's filling what it's supposed to. And then the background. Looks like the background might not be taking up the space that it's supposed to. Potentially. Oh, card container. Is not it needs to be 680 I think to fit everything that we have looks like it okay okay that's looking good so sim easy and or simple enough I guess to switch it Maybe we shouldn't call it, maybe we shouldn't call these image container and name container because I'm thinking we should call it left and right because they won't necessarily always be the same container. Okay. These, these ones. Okay. Oh wait, we use it everywhere. Remotely. If you don't care about supporting old browsers, you could use with fit content according to Paul. You could set the container to auto width. That should make it stretch. Yeah. We switched it to fixed so that we had it auto and then we switched it to fixed so that um, we could move around these elements a little bit easier, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, let me do what I'm thinking. So everywhere where it says image container, oh, wait, that's not how you do it. Here, 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 here. Wait, actually, what am I doing? I think we could have just, because I think you can just search and replace all of them. There's a... Um... And then, is there a replace thing? Uh, it looks if keyboard shortcuts. Find, find and, replace. and replace. Command, command Shift F. Command Option F. Oh, Option F. Okay. Okay. Command Option F. Replace name container. Yeah, I want to replace, but then press Enter. Try. With oh, okay. Yes. All. A. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have like basically, yeah, I, I, we gotta think of a good way to organize this, but I guess let's maybe make it get it working for us. So we have we basically have like this type of column layout and we also have the reverse 
or 200 px, 480 px. So we have these two layouts. Mm -hmm. And then if it's this layout, then we want to append uh, the all of this information to the left container mm -hmm. and the rest of the right. Um, I think we can probably see this, right? Just the information itself. Or we can't. This is line 36. Okay, see, I don't think you can. Um, what are you trying to see? Well, I'm trying to think of what makes sense. Like, I guess we can maybe like randomly pick one of these these uh, grid rules, mm -hmm. and then depending on which grid rule we pick. Mm -hmm. We'll have to pick the, or we'll have to append the content to the right, uh, left to the right side, and it has to be correct for the image and the content, the yeah. text content. Mm -hmm. And also, I think this should go at the very, or actually, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see, I can put these rules in an array. So these can be the. Uh, our simple simple grid rules. So the first one is that and the second. And so if we select index position zero, then we know certain things. Mm -hmm. If we select index position one, we know certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, let's let's give this a shot. So then, I guess we also we just want to pick a random integer. Pick random integer between between that should be enough in JavaScript. Oh, I saw it. Int from interval. between two numbers. So we can just put this helper function. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is another case where we should do some, create more modular code. Yeah. Because we're using this multiple times now. So between we want to select between zero and one and simple grid rules dot length minus one because dot length will give us two and then we subtract one mm. it's like index so if the grid rules we have more then it'll be able to kind of like handle that mm. so we're getting a grid and then we actually don't want we do want one of these, but then we want to comment out these two. So we'll set the grid template selection to simple grid rules, uh, grid selection. Is it square pack brackets? Uh, Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Because this is this is a number. Yeah. Okay, so there, it's switching occasionally. And then we also want to, all of this stuff where we're appending child, we do it afterwards. And we do it depending on which uh, grid we selected. I wonder if one thing we could do is create a button so that um, on click, it runs all of these stuff. And each click, it would pull in a different unsplash image. Yes. Right? I f or I think we could probably pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can 
run this bit over and over mm. in the JavaScript and then make sure that we're setting the background image URL mm. part of the image container. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be a really good thing to clean up after this. Grid selection is zero. Then that means we have the left left side text. So we want this. Oh my gosh. Oops, I should have kept a copy of the other one, huh? That's real bad. <laughs> okay, so but if we reload now. Oh yeah, that's that's good stuff. <laughs> right container. I really like how um that text just overlays on the image. <laughs> oh. Wait, yeah, this is what we want to do. Oh wait, oops, oops, oops. We also want to, wait. Okay, let's walk through this code. So we have two different grid rules. It's gonna select one at random. Um, and it's going to set the grid um, to the selection. So if it's the first one, we want the text on the left. We want the image on the right. If it's the second one, then we want the left to contain the image and the right side to contain the text. We probably will get some more information if we inspect this. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Left container.
So when so there's zero layout, it's getting messed up. I thought when it's one, it's also messed up. One, I think, is fine, isn't it? Oh, I see. It's one. Image container. Oh, wait. Because we also need to We've we've we hard coded that the image container is the left container always, but it's not always. Mm. So in this example, it is. In this example, the right container the. The right container. The left container is the name container. That's going to fix it. Okay, so the image is over there, but now we're seeing two for some reason. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Come back. Oh, dot add, but we also have to remove too. So this is probably where we should probably maybe start looking into other like libraries because this is going to be really annoying really quick. There you go. So on the Yeah, because we're like toggling, we're toggling classes mm -hmm. on the left and right containers. We sort of want to toggle everything off each time, so maybe we can write a function for this. Function toggle off. Given an, given an element, we'll toggle everything off, so We'll just remove everything for that element. So, so the element. So right now we only have these two, but perhaps we'll have more in the future. So we'll just toggle the image container and the name container class name off of each of these because we're adding them when they're necessary. So then we can Call toggle off on the right container. And we can toggle off the left container. And then after we've toggled everything off of both of the containers, we can then add what we need, the correct class that we need for that container. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do a similar process for the bottom one. And you'll see that we're repeating a lot of code on both of these sections, which kind of indicates that a function might make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can add that uh, when we refactor and clean this up. But for now, that's switching. So that, that's two templates. Kind of dynamic. <laughs> yeah. 
So, in the case of something like UI bot, there's the animation between the states. Mm. So you would probably want to keep track of like, okay, we're on this state right now, and we want to transition transition yeah from this state to this state, and that includes a bunch of like CSS stuff that's going to change. Um, CSS transitions. There is a CSS thing that's just called transition all, I believe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Transition just like everything. Mm -hmm. Transition all. The all keyword, this uses the all keyword to identify that we want all properties to transition. Okay. Would that be an interesting challenge right now? So when we click, okay, so a few things we want to do. We want to maintain like a, rather than just selecting randomly, what we really want is to um, do this a little bit more systematically where like we take into account what the current state is mm -hmm. and then perhaps uh, like make sure we don't pick the same. So every single, at least for our example, when we have two rules, it should toggle between the two. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we need to maintain like some state. And we also need a button because that can't, the transition won't show on refresh. So initially, okay, so initially it is random, but then after that, we want to take into account what the current grid selection is and pick a different one. Yeah, and we need a button, so we can add that underneath. I think we can Style also close some tabs if we want to. Um. So bar. Transition bar style button equals document dot query selector hashtag style and get or what do I call it style but what did I call it style transition is that the best name. Uh, button uh, add event if you make sure we hooked up the button console.log asdf okay 
Und so dann habe ich gesagt, was geht. Ähm. So on click it would toggle through yeah. the left and right container. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this again. Or actually, wait, we'll probably need to run this code again. So we'll do the function. Uh, place elements. So here, so var next selection is going to be um, where did we select it? Oh, grid selection. So if the grid, so if the grid selection is currently equal to one, then we'll switch it to, this is a special syntax. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll switch it, otherwise it's one. So, okay, now we need to use next selection. So how do we use grid selection? We use grid selection to pick the, the grid. Given, place elements given a selection. So here it's going to take, we're going to call place elements with the, uh, the, uh, the first grid selection, which is this one right here. Mm -hmm. But then when in the event listener, we don't want to use that. We want to use the next selection. So next selection. What? How come it doesn't work? It should flip back and forth, back and forth. See if there's anything in the console. Yeah, let me console.log. Next selection. It just stays as one. So Oh, grid selection. Oops. We want to. Oh. Because grid selection is called one time and then it never gets called again. So I think what we actually want to do is we want to set grid selection. So we want to keep on updating that variable. Mm. And then we can pass that in right here. Oops. <laughs> That was a uh, ID Twitch. <laughs> okay. Arrow. Can't find next selection. So I, I must have called next selection right here. Yeah, so we're logging that. Okay, hey. so it's toggling our two very basic designs. Mm -hmm. But now nonetheless, we it's toggling. Transition. Yeah, um, that we that since we both don't know how to do, and so it'll be. <laughs> it'll I'll, be I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you. 
Okay, so transition next... will look so cool, especially for like transitioning from a vertical to a horizontal. Yeah. It'll look crazy. I don't know if we're gonna be. Yeah, I don't. It, it's gonna be a lot, but <laughs> we can do it. So right now, does the image, the text, sit inside card container? Uh, name container. Name container. Mm -hmm. Everything, including the image, or no? The image is inside. If you mouse over it, it's in a image, image container. container. Yeah, but and that that's updated dynamically. So it's actually first in, in the in the JavaScript. It's like left and right, and those are actually always on the side they're on. But then we add it depending on which grid template rule we pick. We're now adding that class onto it. So we're telling the image container to be on the left or on the right, or. Yeah, it, or like it's like left container, right container, and then we select a template, which means that either the left or the right side will be 480 pixels. And then after that's been done, um, we attach to the 480 pixel one, we attach right or text container or whatever, name container. CSS transition all. So it transitions the whole. That's not okay. So want. then, some somehow on button when we programmatically change it, we also want to transition. So I don't know. We might have to Google something for that. Like if things inside, like a listener, I don't know. Like, yeah. Transition on click, CSS transition on click. Hello. Yeah, I think this is it. This is in jQuery though. That's fine, so it's an on click function. So you switch it from transform blank to transform 45 degrees. Hmm, because we're doing it, it's not exactly this. What we're actually transforming is the elements inside the box. Mm -hmm. The box itself should stay static. Yeah, but then the transition tag is in image. So it's on the element itself that's going to be moving. Yeah. Try it here and here. Close. Yeah, and then click it in. So it'll place it and then transition the rest of the properties. But because I, I don't know, because we're deleting, because in the JavaScript, we like delete everything and then add it back. So oh. that's why it's like, popping out and then popping back in yeah rather than like from its current position flipping yeah um so we might need to google some more stuff i'm not quite sure yet what to do could it be that
Could we go from one class to another class then? Something you'd have to Google, but yeah, that'd be interesting. What do you have suggestion? No, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to do there. We should have write the we should have wrote the code differently. This says talk on click toggle class. Toggle class click. And then it has it's adding a margin left to it. Wait, no way. I think there's an easier way to do this. Or using that code that you just that you just showed, mm -hmm. um, go back to our code because basically what we need to do is we need to leave the elements. Um, we can never delete elements from the page. So can we go back to the JavaScript? Yeah. Yeah, because right now we're appending elements. Hmm. Actually, how is this even working right now? <laughs> I mean, it's starting to look cool. Like, we know what it will look like if we can do this. Um, OK. I think this might be a good time to start from the very top and walk through it all. Okay. So we're selecting the main card container. We're creating the elements that we need, image, p tag, h3, setting the text inside of these things, um, creating the divs that we're going to be using. Mm -hmm. um, we add some classes to them. I realized, actually, I think there might be a better way. So in the CSS, rather than changing rather than changing the classes on them leave this information where it is and never or never add or remove it from a div mm -hmm. flip these do you see so we can call one side image one side text and we can flip these so right now we're just flipping these but what if we flip these two right mm -hmm. and then had a transition on the card container i think okay I don't, I don't really know. It's going to require a little bit of refactor, but I think it, um, everywhere where we said left container, we're going to have to switch it back to say um, <laughs> yeah. How many places is this going to happen? It might mess up on the image container. Thing. We're removing this function, though. The image container? Um, remember, we were adding the image to the unspot. To the image container. Yeah. I think, I think that should be OK still. Because just, okay, container, replace all, we're just going to go for it, we're not even, we're not even, okay, so the image container gets this and it will never, rewind button, oh, so it had version control, yes, okay, so we, and you can go, oh, those so two. has someone created a remix, who's that, someone did, Okay, image container, name container. We're adding them and we're never gonna re remove it. I think we don't wanna specify it here. I wanna pick the, the rule first and then depending on the rule, this is gonna happen next. 
that's fine. We can append the containers to that. This I'm not quite sure we want to do yet, but I'll paste it here, reference it. Okay, so here we're selecting a template, either the 480 or the 200, and we're setting it immediately. Mm -hmm. Once set, we need to update um, we need to update grid template areas too. So card dot style. So we kind of want like data like attached to it. So if we pick this, I'm adding additional information. Uh, we want, and then for this one, This option then okay so simple grid rules grid selection and then the grid template column bit is the first index of that do you see do you see this right here mm -hmm. template areas equals So let's remove the transitions for now. I think we're I th actually wait. I think we know where we want it, right? So it has to be on the class. We're selecting a grid rule. Um, selecting a grid, and then from the selection, the first bit is this which is our template column, length, and then the template area, what we're calling name and image. Um, when do we specify that in mm. grid area? We never did that. No. Okay, so this is kind of selected. We've set the new grid thing. So we can do image container dot style. Wait, okay, here. Uh, the image container is called image. And the name container is called name in the end. <laughs> Wait, what? Reopen this page. Open. Oh yeah, that was the wrong one. Oh, but now they're not even in. Are these elements inside of card container? They are. Let's see, they have a lot of stuff. Grid. CSS. Grid area or grid template column? I was looking at this bottom example where we called it a grid area and it was working. Mm. Yes. And what's that? If you set it, name of these columns. Mm -hmm. And if you set the grid area to that name, then it'll refer to that. So name will like place it. 
This broke. Where did it break? Did it break right here? Go to console, see if there's an error. Also, uh, um, actually, wait, we can add this true. Let's do that first. Maybe we can figure it out there. Otherwise, I'm thinking we can just add it to. Uh, I'm thinking we can just add it here, in here. Because this wouldn't change. Then remove those bits. Okay, never change for the name container. Mm -hmm. So we're adding the class. We're selecting a grid rule. And then we're setting all the information. So the grid template.columns is getting this first part. The grid template areas is getting this part mm -hmm. and then we have a button which will update just one of these bits that's probably not good oh wait ooh, and it's also updating the wrong thing it needs to update the first bit each time you click And then we don't want to do any of these toggling things. Just kidding. Oh my. Inner. Has an image in it. What? And the uh, image container has text. Did I just mess up somewhere? Oh, that's no bueno. I messed up. I reversed. Right now, all of this code, I believe, is not being used. This whole chunk. It's not doing exactly what we expected. <laughs> it's okay, I think we're really, really close. So, the name container. The name container contains and when we click. So we see this changes. We saw that change. 200 and 480. Um, here and then grid template areas left and right so so when it's 480 and 200 oh wait why does it say left and right oh this needs to say name or wait 200 px so it's image name freaking wait what's happening <laughs> the the components are not switching right now Yeah, because just right now, this attribute is changing. This attribute right here is changing. Mm. Okay, so this is it. We're just going to finish this and call it a day. Call it a day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the walk through it. 
image container, we're appending the image container to the card. We're adding the class that we're never going to change. There's rules. We randomly select an initial done immediately. Um, based on the selection, we're setting grid template areas. It's definitely not changing. But even if it... we have that link still, let's switch it. We closed a bunch of tabs. One, one, no, here. So we have grid template column, grid template areas. What was the tutorial we were on previously? That one I thought was pretty good. Was it W3 grid template area? It was like CSS code or something, CSS Academy or something. Oh, yeah. Grid template area. So it's like four columns. So we ours is two columns, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And then you specify in sets of strings, which is like a row. So grid, oh, we're not areas, grid area. Wait, I don't, we don't really want to search through all that. It's just, wow, there's so much to this with the grid templates property. Alternatively, this property can be used as an even shorter shorthand for grid row start. Okay, oh, that's why I added all of them. That it's working, I think, as expected. Is, is it grid areas or grid area? All these like little small grid area. Two hundred and forty. I don't get why this doesn't work though. This. First time. No. This is pretty confusing. Where are you at, according to the, according to Bo? <laughs> Where are you at? This doesn't seem to be, uh, I don't know. I guess it's just not important. Man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so it's reversed now. <laughs> Okay, you know what we can do? We can take a break and we'll just figure it out tonight. Okay. All right. Uh, it looks like we might have one viewer right now. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry we couldn't figure this out. I know it's kind of, probably kind of annoying watching this. If there is one viewer. All right. Um, we'll be online again soon. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right.